cool, wonderful person, this is Anton, and this is a planet we normally don't really talk much about. Mostly because it's really far away, but also because we haven't really been discovering a lot of things around it. This is Neptune, and um, for the most part, the only thing that I've ever talked about when it comes to Neptune is the fact that it has a very unusual moon known as Triton that seems to orbit against the flow. Mostly because we believe this moon was captured by Neptune probably a few billion years ago and is most likely going to be responsible for, well, actually destroying all of the other moons. But today we're going to be talking about one of those moons around Neptune that has recently received an official name. Hippocamp. Or Hippocamp? No, I think it's Hippocamp. Anyway, let's talk a little bit more about this and first let me actually show you where this moon is located. Now, if you actually look really closely, you'll see that there's a couple of rings you can see right in here. I'm going to try to get closer to them. As you may probably already know, um, all of the ice giants and all of the gas giants in our solar system have rings. Neptune is no exception, but just like Uranus, its rings are actually very, very thin. There's one right there. And also, they're much darker than the ones around Saturn. And that's because we believe that these rings are actually formed by a slightly different material, a very rocky material. Um, and somewhere within these rings, there's actually a few moons as well. But we're looking for a specific moon here. Actually, I don't think I'll be able to find it this way. I may need to bring up Universe Sandbox Square, where all of the moons are labeled and are very, very easy to see. So the moon we're talking about today is right, actually it's the only moon that doesn't have a name, and it's right here. So this is, or was known as S2004 N1. And that's because it was discovered back in 2004, and uh, the same people who discovered it actually had a chance of looking at it a little bit closer again a few years ago, and they were able to, um, well, calculate its diameter first of all, but also dis determine its orbital parameters and even analyze its potential origin. And this is actually where this study gets really exciting. So today we're going to actually rename it. So this is now known as the hippocamp, and uh, the reason it's named that is because everything in the system of Neptune has to have some kind of a Greek or Roman uh, connotation, and it also has to be related to the ocean. And turns out that hippocamp is a some sort of a half horse, half fish creature, and even though I've never really heard of it before, I've heard of another creature with a similar name that's usually also called hippocamp, and that's of course the seahorse. And unofficially, that's actually what this particular moon is named after, because Mark Showalter, that you see on the screen right here, um, is essentially responsible for naming this particular moon, and is also an avid scuba diver who loves, loves, loves seahorses. And that's basically why he decided to kind of unofficially name it Hippocamp. And um, on the other hand, he's also uh, one of the senior investigators behind SETI, the super famous search for extraterrestrial intelligence, and um, he essentially got to study the system of Neptune uh, using Hubble telescope and was able to find this particular moon. And what's interesting is that uh, while looking for this particular object, um, his team was also able to uh, unofficially discover a new technique for looking for these very, very small objects. And this is, by the way, only about 32 kilometers in diameter. It's actually relatively similar in size to Ultima Thule, that uh, New Horizons mission recently passed by. And um, the way that they were able to discover this moon is by essentially taking a look at the Neptune region eight different times, but they were then able to combine all eight of their observations into one single picture, and then they saw that there was a little spot right here that resembled a moon. And so this is how not only they were able to actually discover this moon, but also establish that there were no other moons larger than this in the region of Neptune. There could be possibly smaller moons, but definitely nothing below the size of approximately 20 kilometers in diameter. And this technique they discovered will now also probably be used to find various other objects, including potentially um, exoplanets around other stars, because it's a very effective technique. Now, they also discovered something really interesting. First of all, they found out that this moon is very, very close to the other named moon, actually one of the bigger moons here, known as Proteus. 
And it just so happens that we also know that Proteus has a relatively large crater on its surface, um, which actually supports the hypothesis that we had about all of these moons most likely receiving a lot of collisions early on from things like comets and asteroids that then may have actually separated into other pieces and created even more moons. And so what this suggests is that this little piece right here, or this little crater, was created possibly sometime in the last three or maybe four billion years ago. And then this piece most likely ended up being this moon that we have here known as Hippocamp. The reason we think so is because, well, first of all, it's much smaller, but also because it's actually in a very similar orbit to uh, Proteus. And also, um, if, we, if it was there for, let's say, four and a half billion years, it would actually most likely already be absorbed by the other moon. And this, of course, means that we have now discovered the first ever moon that was actually created as the result of a collision between another moon and most likely a large comet or an asteroid, which kind of makes it a pretty cool moon to begin with. And by the way, if you were to compare all of the moons of Neptune in one single picture, this is kind of what they would look like with Hypocam being relatively small compared to the other moons. And then on top of this, we also have Triton, which is actually in the league of its own, because if this is Proteus right here, Triton is essentially a tiny dwarf planet, or actually a relatively medium-sized dwarf planet, that's actually comparable in size to our own moon. So this is what our own moon would look like if I were to place it right next to Triton. And it's also um, somewhat bigger than Pluto as well. So this is why we think that Triton was actually very likely um, a dwarf planet that was captured by Neptune several billion years ago, and this is also why it's orbiting against the flow, basically in the other direction from every other moon. But since we're actually talking about this moon, Hippocamp, we're going to go back to it for a second, and so, okay, what else do we know about it? Well, first of all, we know the site, it's about 32 kilometers. We also know that it takes it about 23 hours to orbit around Neptune, um, and its orbit is approximately 100,000 kilometers away from Neptune's surface, which is about, I guess, three times closer than our own moon, maybe three and a half times closer. So in that sense, it's a relatively close moon. It's just a little bit past the rings that I showed you earlier. But in every other sense, it's very exciting uh, in that Hippocam is definitely connected to Proteus and um, is basically the first moon we discovered that was created as part of the collision. Now, um, it's also the last moon to be named here, so now every other moon here, as you can see, has a proper name. But unfortunately, because it's so far away and because it's so small compared to everything else in this system, we're probably not going to find out much more about it until we potentially launch a mission to this particular planet. As you probably know, there hasn't really been any Neptune-specific mission. The only mission that has ever visited Neptune was the Voyager. Um, but maybe one day we'll be able to visit this simply because of Triton, because Triton is a very exciting, well, okay, it's actually now destroyed, but Triton in general is a very exciting moon because, as you may already know, um, it's one of the few moons that has um, some kind of an atmosphere here, and very likely very large deposits of water, very large deposits of other organic materials, and is very similar um, in structure and potentially composition to Pluto. On the other hand, it might also have some really interesting mysteries here that we definitely would like to one day discover. But until then, that's all we kind of know about Hippocamp and the system of Neptune, and hopefully one day we'll discover a little bit more about this mysterious but very awesome system of this beautiful ice giant. On that note, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about space and sciences and of course our solar system from this video. And subscribe if you still haven't and maybe even share this video with someone who enjoys learning about sciences and space. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out and as always, bye-bye.